Hello, this is Dr. Kornman. I was asked to review a case of a post-operative cervical hematoma in the neck and potential complications. This is a review of the potential complications and how to recognize this disorder. First, we understand the anatomy of the neck. You can see on the left side, the front to back view, where you can see the trachea surrounded by the blue rings and on the side by the trachea and esophagus. You can see the dotted line. This is where the incision is made for the ACDF. The muscles are retracted, and you can visualize both the trachea and the esophagus behind it. Both of these are moved out of the way by retraction, and the disc, of course, is removed. You can see the blue uh, image of the disc being removed, and here you see the burr using uh, to open up the disc spaces and to create a decompression. You then put a graft, an allograft or an autograft within the disc spaces, and that's depicted here, and then you put on a plate. You can see the plate on the left side of the neck there, and that plate is attached using screws, as you can see on the right side. Then the incision is closed, and you would assume there would be a drain placed because sometimes these do bleed, and you want to be able to get the blood out. Typical small hematomas are not a big deal, as you see depicted here by the red. There's a little pressure on the esophagus. There's no pressure on the trachea. But this hematoma, if the drain doesn't function or is not recognized, then this hematoma can grow, initially having trouble with swallowing, as you can see on the right-sided picture where there's some compression of the esophagus. When the hematoma grows, the trachea or the airway can become compressed, and that can create difficulty in breathing. When it becomes significantly compressed, the trachea is actually pushed to the side, as you can see on the left picture, and that creates significant problems with breathing. The patient will actually be sitting up bent forward in bed with air hunger. Eventually, when recognized, hopefully an endotracheal tube is put down the airway so that the airway can still maintain oxygenation. This is what the x-ray looks like with the superimposed airway, and here is the x-ray where you can see the plate and a very small radiolucent line on the side. Again, this shows you, if you look to the left of the picture, the tube which is pushed to the side due to the hematoma. Again, another picture of this. One other thing that occurs when you have these hematomas is you can have blood problems with blood pooling in the head. Here you see the red arteries carrying blood up to the head, and here you see the blue veins carrying blood away from the head. The veins are a low-pressure system, and the arteries are a high-pressure system. A hematoma can compress the veins, but you won't generate enough pressure to compress the arteries. So the arteries continue to pump blood, but the veins can't pull the blood out of the head, and the head swells, as depicted in this picture. The neck eventually will swell as well as the shoulders, and this is the problem associated.